Bun găsit, prieteni! Sunt Tudor Cortifan, suntem din nou în cadrul forumului ASPAN GMF 2024. Discutăm astăzi cu domnul Andrei Shevchenko, fost ministru adjunct al apărării în Ucraina. Mr. Shevchenko, thank you for being here. It's a pleasure. Thanks for having me. So, uh, how do you assess the current situation in Ukraine? We all support Ukraine, we all stand with Ukraine right now, but uh, uh, we are looking at the current situation. Uh, it's very hard right now to make any, any, uh, any assessment, but uh, also we are worried that uh, North Koreans are part of this war. So, Russia, every time talk about escalation of war, but they are doing right now this uh, new, bringing a new level of escalation. Uh, well, the situation, as you can imagine, is very difficult, and I do think, in a way, it's a critical junction, whether we find enough resources and commitment to finish the job, to get this job done, to make sure that we can um, strip Russia of its assault capabilities for many decades to come, or things can go really bad. And there is one very important development which we might want to go more into details with, it's the international effort that Russia has been trying to put uh, together. Because if we look at Russia, at uh, Iran, North Korea and China, it would be very naive not to see that these countries coordinate. And if we see escalation in Ukraine, in Israel, in the Red Sea, in the Strait of Taiwan at the same time, I think it's clear that we see those nations learning how to cooperate and how to destabilize the globe together. Uh, Romania help for Ukraine. You mentioned in your panel uh, about this. Uh, it's an important uh, F-16 center here in Romania. I know uh, your pilots are uh, right now are training for for F-16s. Uh, we donate a Patriot uh, a Patriot system to Ukraine. So th this is another important dimension. Uh, what what? your opinion and how, what uh, do you think you need more m most right now because everybody is talking about uh, defense systems they are using a lot of missile a lot of rockets they are targeting your civilians your infrastructure energy infrastructure and so on this is a war of terror i think uh, we have exemplary cooperation between ukraine and uh, romania when it comes to defense cooperation in my capacity as uh, Deputy Minister of Defense of Ukraine in 2023, I work closely with, with your country. And uh, I should tell you, we felt we had enough confidence in Romania as our very good, reliable partner with proper way of framing the situation, with good understanding that the collective effort should be exercised and with very strong uh, deliverables. On top of what you have already mentioned, we've done together many other things. Of course. The logistical hub, which was crucially important in 2022, 2023, and, and on. Of course, our cooperation on the Black Sea grain, uh, grain corridor corridors, yeah. and so many other things. So this cooperation is feasible, it's uh, visible, and it's, uh, it's very important. I wish all our partners, all our friends across the free world had this good systematic understanding that it's the collective effort which will help us to achieve what we need. You think our European leaders or leaders in the free world that are afraid of a uh, defeated Russia, maybe maybe this scenario everybody is talking about, you know, Putin is a criminal, it's a war criminal, but his sort of way predictable, we don't know what will happen if Russia will fall. This is an, a scenario that I, is very used in the Western capitals. I mean, this is the truth. We need to tell you. What we, there are many things that we indeed do not know, but of there course. is one thing that we do know for sure, if we don't stop Putin, uh, that will create huge problems across the continent and across the globe. So we have no choice but to fight. And when I say we, I mean not just Ukraine. We, as a free world, we've got to find the way to, uh, to stop Putin. And uh, I use this metaphor of a bridge or a river dam. Like when you build a bridge, yes. if it's 90%, it's not a bridge not yet. A bridge. It's rather a danger. Or if it's a river dam, even if it's 99% complete, but it's not done, then the river will destroy it. So we had some good relative success fighting the Russians. We made the Black Sea Fleet dysfunctional. We stopped them. We, uh, we stripped them of a huge portion of their land assault capabilities. 
but it is very far from being enough to finish the war. And right now, that's why I'm saying we are at this very critical junction, because we have made Russia and Putin bleed, uh, being very frustrated, but uh, things might go very bad if we don't finish the job. Um, some people are talking about uh, freezing this war. I mean, uh, this is, an, in my opinion, it's not a good idea because Russia will not stop here. I mean, they will have time to to rebuild their army, to rebuild their economy, and uh, continue the continue the war. I mean, this war uh, did not start twelve uh, two, two, two years ago. It started ten years ago. Everybody forgot that it is. the war started with. Uh, illegal annexation of Crimea. So Russia, in my opinion, will not stop here. So um, are you afraid of this scenario that uh, freezing the war will be in the agenda of uh, European leaders and worldwide leaders? We are concerned about uh, this, of course. Uh, and uh, I think it's very important that if we are looking for a solution how we can stop the war, it should be sustainable and it should be something that can uh, keep peace in this part of the world and globally for decades. So that's why we insist so much that we need to, to, to take the situation with collective approach. If we're talking about NATO and Ukraine, it's very important to understand if, if NATO uh, has Ukraine as its member and we are part of this collective defense, that's one scenario. And, uh, if we want to keep Ukraine vulnerable to Russian father attack or assault at any time, that's a very different scenario and it's going to be much more expensive. So that's why our call to our friends, to the world, let's be very serious, let's think long term, let's find good collective solutions, let's see this war not as a regional, small regional event in a big country like Ukraine, but let's see this as one huge theater. Uh, all the way starting from the Barents Sea and to the Mediterranean and to the Red Sea. We're talking about creating this one huge zone of instability and escalation. Oh, my last question, Andrei. Uh, I, we all know that Ukraine acts like a shield for all of us, for Europe, for the free world right now. But Russians are very strong in hybrid warfare. I mean, we had the Moldova example these days. In Romania, we will have a golden year elections, three rounds of elections, parliamentary ele elections, presidential elections, and so on. It's very important. They are trying to uh, broke our resistance with Ukraine uh, on propaganda. They are very powerful of propaganda, and they adapt to every country scenario. Uh, how do you think we can uh, fight this, uh, this Russian propaganda? Because with this information, fake news, and so on, they are trying to push you all, to push us over? The bad thing is that we heavily underestimated the importance of this yes, hybrid to information yes, I agree. war. I agree. Another bad news that our enemies, our adversaries, they quite early uh, understood for themselves the importance of this. When we read the Chinese documents, we see that starting from 20 years ago, they already had this hybrid war or cognitive mm -hmm. uh, yes. assault as part of their defense or security doctrine. Uh, Rus the Russians were quite, uh, quite quickly arrived to the same, uh, to, to the same uh, thing and same understanding. So that's bad. The good thing is that we finally understand it. I was very surprised at this forum to hear the information about the hybrid war on every single panel and it's almost like in every big speech or comment you would hear this. That's really important for one simple reason. We finally understand that never in the human history uh, there, was, there was such a way to influence such a huge amount of people in such a short uh, period of time. And Moldova is a, is a very important and painful example. example. And again, it was a shock, but it wasn't a surprise. So we do understand the importance. We must find some ways to address this. We also must find some good ways how we can not just defend ourselves, but how we can attack if necessary. That's the way to win big wars in this new modern era. Thank you so much, Andrew. It was a pleasure. I appreciate Thank it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.